Hi, this is Tips and Tricks by Mike McFadden. This short tutorial is called Raster and Vector Graphics Explained. When someone starts learning desktop publishing, graphic design, digital design or web design, the very first concept that they need to come to grips with is the types of graphics they will be dealing with. And luckily there are only two, Raster Graphics and Vector Graphics. No matter how complex a design is, these are the only two types of graphics you will encounter. So we must understand what is a raster graphic and what is a vector graphic and what are their properties. Why do we need these two types of graphics and when is it appropriate to use each type. In order to understand these things we first need to look at the anatomy of a layout or design. No matter how complex your design or layout is, there are only three categories of objects that you need to create your designs. Graphics, which includes shapes, logos and line art. Text, which includes headings, captions, body text. And photos, including compositions and images like JPGs, PNGs, TIFFs and PSDs, Photoshop documents. Given the three types of objects that we need in a design, let us look at our expectations from these objects. We want our shapes, text and photos to be easy to capture or create. We want them to be as easy as possible to edit and lay out. We want them to look as good as possible in the final output, whether a printed magazine, web page or other. It is these requirements that lead us to the two types of graphics, raster and vector, because these two graphic types will meet all of those expectations. Let us look at the raster graphic type first. This type of graphic consists of a grid of tiles running horizontally and vertically, much like a spreadsheet or a mosaic. Each tile holds color information. We call these tiles pixels, which stands for picture element. When a sufficient number of pixels in a graphic are viewed at a distance, we perceive continual tone and smooth graphics. This is best illustrated in a high resolution photograph, which typically has thousands of pixels wide and high. When a camera is advertised, the term megapixel is used. This refers to the number of pixels wide times the number of pixels high a camera is capable of capturing. This is called the pixel dimensions. The pixel dimensions of a raster graphic will determine how large the image can be viewed and printed while still maintaining good quality. The more pixels wide and high, the larger the graphic can be printed and the larger it can be viewed on a screen. This relationship between pixel dimensions, print and viewing size and quality is called resolution dependency, meaning that raster graphics are resolution dependent, that is dependent on the number of pixels. Since raster graphics are resolution dependent, it is imperative that you source graphics that have sufficient pixel dimensions for your purpose, for example print. Without enough pixels, your image will appear pixelated, meaning the individual pixels of the image will be enlarged to the point of being visible and giving your image a blocky look. Since a raster graphic consists of thousands of pixels, and this data must be registered in the file when saving, the end result is that raster graphic files tend to be large in terms of megabytes. In order to compensate for the huge file sizes, the typical raster image formats such as JPG have compression abilities built into them. This means that the large amounts of data can be squeezed into a smaller file size using various shorthand technologies. Ultimately, the more you compress a file, the poorer the quality. So your job as a graphic designer is to establish the sweet spot for a raster graphic between file compression and quality. A raster graphics job is to record continual tone or tonal range. This refers to the millions of shades and tones that you see in the real world. Therefore, a raster graphic is best suited to photography and photo editing because it records continuous tone faithfully through the use of thousands of tiny pixels of color which, when viewed together, create the perception of tonal range. The design application best suited to dealing with the editing of raster graphics is Photoshop. This is its job, to edit raster graphics. Photoshop is the industry standard everywhere for raster graphic editing. Let us look at vector graphic types next. The word vector refers to a path between two points. 
Another word for this is trajectory. So a vector graphic deals with points and the lines that join the points together to create shapes. Therefore is a set of mathematical coordinates for points and instructions on how to create the paths between the points and how to graphically treat these shapes created from paths and points. For example, to create a rectangle you would have four sets of coordinates for points, instructions on how the paths must join the points, details of parameters like width, height, fill color, stroke color, and even details on things like whether the shape should have a drop shadow. Vector graphics can get really complicated when many vector shapes are created and stacked together in an arrangement to create an illustration or logo. Unlike raster graphics, vector graphics are resolution independent. That means that no matter how large or small you scale them and no matter how much you zoom into them, they will always stay razor sharp because the file is just a set of instructions to your computer application telling it how to reconstruct the shapes. Pixels do not matter. Unlike raster graphics, vector graphic files tend to be quite small because the information contained in the file is simple instructions. Unlike raster graphics, vector graphics are not suitable for the complex tonal ranges found in photos. Vector graphics are mostly limited to flat shapes, fills and simple gradients. Therefore, vector graphics are best suited to the shapes on a page such as logos, icons, simple illustrations, etc. Text is an example of vector graphics. Each letter in a word is made up of shapes consisting of points and paths. This is important because text should always be razor sharp in any document. Illustrator is the industry standard application used for the creation and editing of vector graphics. Other applications that deal with vector graphics are InDesign and CorelDRAW. A good way of understanding the difference between a raster and vector graphic in design is to think of music. An MP3 is a faithful recording of a band playing music at a particular point in time. The MP3 file can be quite large and therefore can be compressed. The more it is compressed, the poorer the quality of the playback. This is much like a raster graphic or photo, which is a faithful snapshot of a particular point in time. A sheet of music is different to an mp3 in that it is a recipe or set of instructions explaining to a musician how to reproduce a piece of music. Much the same as a vector graphic is a recipe or set of instructions telling the computer application how to reproduce a graphic. So we need these two types of graphics to create designs and layouts. Imagine designs only created with raster graphics. The text would be pixelated and the logos and shapes would have jagged edges. Very unattractive. And imagine designs only created with vector graphics. Complex images requiring continuous tone would be posterized and stepped. Also very unattractive. So to get the best possible result from your designs and layouts, you must use a mix of raster and vector graphics to ensure optimal quality for photos and high fidelity for shapes, illustrations, logos, text and designs. A great exercise is to flip through a magazine and try and work out on each page which elements are raster and which elements are vector. It should be very easy to identify which is which. Occasionally it might be difficult to determine whether a graphic is raster or vector, especially when, for example, text is used in a highly custom artistic way that could only be achieved in a raster image or when a vector graphic is so complex that it may look like it could be raster. Looking at different general digital design disciplines, it is important to know what types of graphics will be used. For desktop publishing and graphic design, for print or digital publishing, vector graphics would be extensively used, mostly in the form of Illustrator files. Raster graphics would be extensively used too, in the form of JPGs, PNGs, TIFFs, and Photoshop documents. For web design, vector graphics would be used less extensively in the form of SVG files, that is scalable vector graphics, and raster graphics would be extensively used in the form of JPGs, PNGs, and GIFs. Text and simple shapes would be taken care of through HTML and CSS coding. For video production and motion graphics, 
During the editing and design process, vector, text and shapes can be used together with raster graphics such as photos and video, but ultimately the final output with, will always be raster because digital video is always created with pixels. For 3D design, final renders will always take the form of a raster image format because ultimately you are synthesizing a photo or video. I hope you found this short tutorial helpful and informative. I will be adding more tips and tricks videos to my YouTube channel regularly, so please subscribe and return here every few weeks. Thanks for watching.